All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Am Shabaik, A-M-R-S-H-A-B-A-I-K. I'm the legal and policy director at CARE Los Angeles, and I'm joined by my colleagues here today. Over the past few months, Israel has engaged in a bombing campaign of Gaza, which has resulted in the deaths of approximately 25,000 people, most of them being women and children. Respected international organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Doctors Without Borders, and others have documented Benjamin Netanyahu's government indiscriminately bombing Palestinians and engaging in, in war crimes in what President Biden has called indiscriminate bombing. Recently, the New York Times provided visual evidence that Israel is dropping 2,000 pound bombs on civilians in designated safe zones. Refugee camps, mosques, churches, ambulances, hospitals, schools, and UN facilities have been bombed. The World Health Organization has documented the killing of healthcare workers and the devastation of the entire healthcare infrastructure in Gaza. Unfortunately, the list of horrific actions that the Israeli military and government have engaged in are too long to list here. It is within this context that some members of the LAPD have posted their unequivocal support for the state of Israel in online social media postings. Most egregious of these posts were made in December 2023 well after these documented war crimes have been made known to the world. This social media post shows a member of the LAPD in LAPD paraphernalia standing apparently in a military, Israeli military facility next to bombs that have on them enjoy the fireworks. This member of the LAPD is sitting next to these fireworks, excuse me, sitting next to these bombs with a wide smile on her face. These social media posts send a message to other LAPD members and other Angelinos that the lives, safety, and views of local Palestinian, Arab, and Muslims are not valued. These public social media comments are particularly disturbing given the rise in hate that we've seen against Palestinian, Muslim, and Arabs in America. We've witnessed the murder of the seven-year-old Wadiya Al-Fayyum by his Islamophobic and anti-Palestinian landlord in Illinois. We witnessed three Palestinian American students being shot in Vermont, one of them being left paralyzed. Locally, our CARE LA office has seen a nearly 200 rate. As such, we call on LAPD to re-examine their internal policies and procedures to ensure that they protect against these issues from happening again and from further marginalizing Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim communities. We also call on them that in their search for a new chief, that the new hire be committed to taking steps to ensuring the equal treatment and fair dealings of Palestinians, Arabs, and Muslim Angelinos and other marginalized communities. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Salam Al Mariati, S A L A M A L hyphen M A R A Y A T I. I'm president of the Muslim Public Affairs Council. We sent a letter to the president of the Los Angeles Police Commission today and I will read that letter for you. Dear members of the LAPD Commission, we are writing to express our concern and request a thorough investigation into reports suggesting that LAPD officers may have undergone training programs in Israel. We are particularly concerned about the potential implications of such training on the human rights of the civilian Palestinian population and the civil rights of pro-Palestinian communities and individuals in the city of Los Angeles. While we acknowledge the importance of international collaboration and the exchange of knowledge between law enforcement agencies, it is crucial to ensure that such engagements align with principles of human rights, justice, and accountability. The government of South Africa produced an extensive report at the International Court of Justice at The Hague indicting the Israeli Defense Forces of committing genocide in Gaza. Reports of LAPD officers participating in training programs in Israel have raised questions within the community regarding the nature of the training, its impact on policing practices, and potential violations of human rights. Given the sensitivity, given the sensitive nature of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and concerns raised by various human rights organizations, we believe it is in the best interest of the Los Angeles Police Department 
to conduct a thorough and transparent investigation into any training activities involving LAPD officers in Israel. This, investiga is this, <clears throat> this investigation should aim to address the following questions. One, what specific training programs have LAPD officers participated in while in Israel? Two, were the training programs consistent with international human rights standards and best practices in policing? Three, how might the training receive, be received in Israel? Uh, sorry. Three, how might the training received in Israel influence LAPD officers' practices upon returning to their duties in Los Angeles? And four, what measures are in place to ensure that LAPD officers are trained in a manner that upholds human rights, accountability, and community trust? We urge the LAPD Commission to, prior to prioritize transparency and accountability by conducting an impartial investigation into these matters. This will not only address co concerns within the community, but also reaffirm the LAPD's commitment to upholding human rights and fostering positive relationships with the diverse population it serves. Thank you for your attention to this matter. We trust that the LAPD Commission will take the necessary steps to ensure that the public's concerns are addressed and at that time LAPD remains committed to the highest standards of accountability and respect for human rights. Thank you. Dr. Ahmed Sobo, A-H-M-E-D-S-O-B-O-H, Chairman, Islamic Shura Council of Southern California. On behalf of the Islamic Shura Council of Southern California and the community that it presents, including in Los Angeles, we are here to convey the community sentiment and our concerns about the photos that we saw on social media posted by some of the members of the LAPD. As a community, we appreciate and we extend all words of thanks and gratitude to our law, our law officer personnel to our law enforcement personnel. We thank them for the efforts and the sacrifice they do for the sake of our local community. We are also aware of the pressure that our LAPD officers are going through, whether it is uh, what happens on the streets or on the political aspect as well. With that said, we're extremely shocked, disheartened, concerned about some of the photos that some of the members of the LAPD posted on their online accounts, taking pictures next to rockets, bombs, and weapons that were intended to kill innocent civilians, women, children, and men in the Gaza Strip. While we understand that police officers have the freedom and the right to live a private lives as citizens and visit places and go around and take photos, we do not accept that they are using the LAPD name, image, and logos while they're taking these photos. Because that gives a message that the LAPD is taking sides in this very painful conflict that's taking place overseas, which reflects on our understanding how do the LAPD deal deals with the local community the local Muslim, Arab, and Palestinian community. If we imagine for a moment that one of these law officers took a photo next to a Russian rocket or a Russian tank and posted on social media, the consequences would not be simple. If we imagine for a moment that one of these law officers goes to Gaza and take pictures next to the Gazan fighters, that would not be acceptable. We are asking the LAPD with this new leadership to make sure that we have guidelines on how our LAPD officers are being messengers and ambassadors to their department around the world, especially that LAPD is a world known name. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Hidab Farifi, H E D A B. T-A-R-I-F-I, I'm the spokesperson of the Islamic Center of Southern California. For 
the LAPD to take a political stand on international events, a globally disputed occupation, and side with Israel, it sends a message to the Muslims, Arabs, and Palestinian citizens of Los Angeles that they don't matter. I personally, and on several occasions, while meeting with Chief Moore, expressed our community's concerns about the LAPD training in Israel and the extent of this training. We requested to end any and all such training, aligning the LAPD with an apartheid body that is committing genocide does not reflect positively on the department and its, and it impacts its relationship with the Muslim and Arab communities in LA. They say perception is reality. After seeing the LAPD wide and overt expression of so-called solidarity with Israel since October 7, it is no longer a perception. It is a reality. If the situation was reversed and a Muslim or Arab or Palestinian <laughs> took a photo with the LAPD outfit, hat, jackets and all, next to a bomb and bragged about it while posting on social media, they would have been fired on the spot and perhaps labeled as a terrorist. Pro-Palestinians are harassed and losing their jobs while posting on their personal social media accounts. The LAPD should not be any different. Otherwise, the double standard is glaring us in the face. The LA City Civil Rights Department just issued a report while hate crimes rose by 15%, anti-Semitic hate crime rose by 51%, anti-Muslim and anti-Arab hate crimes increased by 140%. Just imagine that. The public positions of the city leadership cannot be viewed in isolation of such an increase. Not only that, we demand an investigation into these incidents, disengaging with any and all training with the IDF, but also strict policies to be put in place to prevent such behavior happening again. I close by stating that extensive work needs to take place to remedy the current situation between the LAPD and the Muslim and the Arab communities in Southern Texas.